Okay, I wanted to do a quick video on this. This is a customer's tractor, a pretty good customer of ours. Real nice machine. It's a 450 hour 4016 that's been uh, garage kept most of its life, it appears, and taken care of. We do regular service and repairs on this machine. And uh, the customer took this to a couple other places recently because we were so booked up to have some work done to it. And uh, some things weren't done right and we're not gonna go into that completely. But I tried troubleshooting some of this over the phone, and, and we did a couple things. Um, a step back, this tractor first came to me, oh, I don't know, four or five years ago now. Um, not running right. Excessive oil in the air cleaner, uh, which is pretty common for these brigs. And a lot of times it's a bad breather or a head gasket, which is very common. But also there's other things that can do it to these brigs of strat, and they can get temperamental, which could be running the wrong oil running these on hills constantly, running the wrong oil filter, the wrong air filter, all that can contribute to the, these, as well as bad seals somewhere in the engine pulling air in, and uh, it's not able to come out of the, the crankcase fast enough, and it takes it takes oil and pressure with it. I'm gonna show you a little bit right off the bat, and you'll get a feel of what it was doing and why. So back to like, doesn't want to run, it's stumbling, it's stalling, it's smoking, it chokes off. And like I said, we addressed this, we're going to show you. Clear out right away. So your tractor won't take any throttle, it's smoking, it's backfiring. Your air filter is either plugged with oil or debris, and that's what's going on there. And uh, like I said, we, we already kind of solved the problem with this one, but we wanted to redo the video like this. Although it's been a, probably a week and it sat out here and drained out a little bit. So I just put some more oil in the pre-filter, which came with this filter. But wanted to show you guys. But his, when I pulled it out, was dripping oil like this. The base of the air cleaner on the inside here was covered in oil. And all that just got sucked in from that pre-filter. So the breather is normally here, and what we did is we plugged this off, <clears throat> and because he didn't want to pull the motor right now, we're going to address this in the fall since he uses this mainly for mowing, and I think we fixed the problem anyways. I put a new seal in the front PTO here, and the oil dipstick grommet uh, was no good, and I ran it for a while like that. No more oil in the air cleaner. It seemed to fix the problem, but just in case he's a little bit of ways, he rents trailers to come see us. We put a catch can on here and this will get them through the summer if the oil problem does come back but like i said we, we mowed with this we ran it fairly heavy and the oil was there wasn't any oil coming through the breather very little i should say which is normal for the brigs so this is just a backup plan right now so he's not changing 20 dollars air filters every time he goes and mows because this thing was really pushing oil through there i did a compression test on it i did a leak down test on it 180 pounds of compression the leak down test dropped five pounds we put 100 psi in there and it dropped down to like 96 95 couldn't hear it leaking anywhere it runs super good we just tuned it up again i'm thinking that front pto seal was probably sucking some air in and so was this dipstick and it was over over pressurizing the crankcase and pushing oil up through 
Um, so like we ran a couple hours, not a drop of oil came through the, through the breather. So then we put the catch can on. I just ran it a couple more hours and uh, there's very little to nothing in the catch can. And uh, it's 100 degrees out and not the time you want to be mowing your lawn by any imagination. But I wanted to put this thing through its paces. We've already been sent it back to the customer. And uh, it seems to be seems to be fixed. But again, this is the backup plan. Had to plug off this hole because otherwise you're sucking in dirty air if you don't plug off the breather hole. We're going to clean all this oil out. Like I said, I just overfilled, over uh, soaked the uh, air cleaner outer, outer element for the demonstration. So it's fixed with a backup plan. So we'll get them through through the summer, no problem. The thing runs good. We did adjust the valves too, because that also can cause extra pressure in the crankcase. So everything without pulling the motor that causes this oil in the air filter problem, we've done. The back, which would be the front, the flywheel side seal was not replaced because the motor has to get pulled to do that. And the heads and head gaskets were not addressed or, re or replaced. We did oil filter, correct high capacity oil filter. We got the high capacity air filter we put on these. We run 1550 synthetic oil, which is what Briggs Stratton recommends for the Vanguards now. You see the difference too of the other repair shop put in this small air filter here. And this is what we use, the high capacity Briggs and Stratton. I don't know if you can see the difference there, it's probably a little hard. That might be a little better to show you. So it's easily overall an inch bigger. They flow better, they say. And then also the large capacity oil filters help with extra oil, which helps cool, gives you more capacity too. And for whatever reason, they say the smaller oil filters can help with, with this pushing oil through the uh, air cleaner and breather intake. We also did replace the breather on this just to cover our bases, which, and like I said, after after a few years ago, we uh, we did all this stuff and it ran fine, never had an oil problem. And he took it somewhere else. The valves were so far out of adjustment. They're supposed to be five, six thousandths. There were sixteen thousandths on some of them, eighteen thousandths. I thought right off the bat that was a problem. I adjusted the valves. It was still pushing oil. I think we got it licked with a nice uh, redundancy backup prog uh, plan with the oil catch can, and we'll go from there. So today we're going to show you what a, a bad head gasket looks like on a Briggs Vanguard and a lot of other overhead small engines. This is a customer's tractor uh, from eastern New York, a few hours away. Um, called up, told me he had a bunch of oil leaks. We actually washed this thing twice already, our, our steam cleaner's down. Um, but this thing was just covered in oil and grass. He said it ran pretty decent, but he thought the front cover seal on the, on the engine was leaking, the timing cover. and. Um, there was just oil coming out of places where it shouldn't have been basically seeping and then and running down a little bit um not not something steady blown out but definitely just a constant steady seep he wasn't complaining about power or anything the way it ran and it, it does run halfway decent and if you don't know what to look for or listen to or if you've never seen or heard it before i can definitely understand people missing the bad head gasket on it um, we're going to show you a couple things that are kind of telltale signs so after when I start it up, you listen to it and you hear it and you'll probably understand it doesn't sound all that awful bad. Um, but one thing to check is you're going to get an excessive blow by here. And if your motor's running good and you got plenty of power and it does have a ton of hours, you shouldn't be getting very much blow by out of here. Um, real tired engines with bad rings and stuff will get blow by. That's one, one sign. Um, it does run weaker on one cylinder and you can kind of hear it if you know what you're looking for. Also, I'm going to pull the, the cap. This one's lucky enough to have an oil fill on the valve cover. A lot of them don't, but you'll see. And then also we did a compression test, and uh, one cylinder is far lower than the other. And that's not that's not common unless you've got a bad head gasket. Usually both cylinders wear uh, very evenly. If you've got a bad valve issue and stuff, you can have definitely different compression pressures on the cylinders. Um, but all these things are pointing to a head gasket once you put them all together and you just look at the engine and there's there's oil kind of leaking out of places where it shouldn't be. All 
I just uh, ran this a few minutes ago and you can see it's pushing exhaust as I crank it over right out of here and that's just not normal. I just ran it you can still see it a little bit there's exhaust coming out of here shouldn't have any exhaust in here at all see uh, I'm sure when I pull the other side it'll be doing the same thing so we just gave it a path to come out on this side that's all just showing you the signs right now and kind of how to diagnose it we'll have the video on the repair and this is hotter than it should be too because the exhaust is just pumping in there. The crankcase gets so pressurized that it's got to go somewhere so it finds all the weak spots. These little jump packs are amazing. I was skeptical, but this will start my 10 liter diesel service truck. Big V8 cat in there with two batteries and it jumps it, jumps the diesel pickups, no problem. Normally you can run these at an idle and stuff with, with the covers off and get very little oil. It's just making a mess. You shouldn't have any exhaust. So if you got exhaust coming up there, chances are you got a bad head gasket or your motor's whooped and you got super bad rings and, and stuff. But um this is this is nine times out of ten is what it's gonna be on these vanguards, kind of common. Bad push rods and valves and stuff can kind of do the same thing to a degree, but not not nearly as bad. And between all the different signs, this is this is what we're kind of leading towards. So we'll show you more once we open it up, but that's kind of how you do a few tricks to diagnose it and, and see what you got going on. And now we got a nice mess. There's a cylinder with the good or better gasket. Good, we'll find out when we pull it apart, but. So you're 175, 170 pounds. This is gonna be the bad cylinder. Here's the bad gasket cylinder. It takes a long time to get up there. It'll hit 90 if you watch it and then it starts slowing right down. The more you're pumping in there, the more it's gonna keep going up, but. It's about it, and it took a lot longer to get up there. <laughs> 